So I saw this article and I wanted to do a, a segment on it because of a little history behind it. John M. Perkins is dying of cancer at the age of 91. His final message to America is to repent. That's a good message. Now, if you don't know who John Perkins is, he's touted as one of America's most prominent evangelical voices on civil rights and racial reconciliation. Now, us in the Reformed camp know him because a few years ago, John MacArthur spoke on John Perkins. He spoke on his relationship with John Perkins during the assassination of Martin Luther King in 1968. Now, I did a video on this, a couple of videos on this on my previous channel because of the controversy surrounding John MacArthur and John Perkins' relationship. Now, it came out that well, actually John Perkins was interviewed and it came out that the interviewer asked him some questions uh, in regards to his relationship with John, John MacArthur. And he was adamant that he didn't know John, that they had no relationship and that John was making up lies. And it created this controversy in which people start to believe, man, is John MacArthur lying just to, you know, just to find favor with a certain type of people? Uh, what's going on? Well, the truth came out when, uh, uh, let's see, when Phil Johnson actually released a video in which John MacArthur was speaking um, at a conference in which John Perkins was there and people got to witness that it was John MacArthur wasn't lying. They actually had a relationship. Now, I believe John Perkins did that. I believe he was in sin doing that. But the reason I believe he did it was because of John MacArthur's stance on social justice. John MacArthur has a biblical stance on social justice and John Perk that angered John Perkins. He didn't like that. And I think his reaction to that was to lie and try to make John MacArthur look bad by saying there is no association. I don't know him. He's lying. So my thing is, I hope John Perkins has repented of that sin, of his sin of hating his brother. Uh, now, I don't I haven't seen enough content from John Perkins to know his gospel stance and what he teaches and what he believes in regards to the gospel. And I will be looking some stuff up. Uh, it's, it, there's not much out there, but I will, will be looking up to see what I can find. But uh, but yeah, that's that's what it is. And that's what people will do. People who hold fast to these false doctrines, you know, um, they, they'll hate you. They will hate you. And uh, but yeah, I'll go ahead and leave the uh, the link. And I want to go ahead and play a short clip to uh, uh, of John MacArthur speaking of his relationship with John Perkins. Thank you for watching. So this is not keep coming back to you, get it right. <laughs> I have to say a word about John Perkins. Um, it was just a precious moment to see you, John. I have such vivid memories. When I was very young, just out of seminary, and the civil rights was civil rights movement was flourishing. John invited me down to Mendenhall, Mississippi. I think I. I think I came down six years in a row over periods of time, and uh, uh, we had some amazing adventures. Um, because of my association with him, the sheriff hauled me into jail, a and he said, we're fining you for doing what you're doing. I said, I'm preaching the gospel. I was going around with you to the high schools, and, and he said, well, we're fining you. I said, how much? He said, how much you got? He took all my money, <laughs> which wasn't a whole lot. I, I don't want to take the time to give you the history of this, but John and I, with Charles Evers, who was, uh, I think he was the first mayor uh, in the South, black mayor in the South. Is that true? I think I remember that. First mayor of an integrated city. And his brother was Medgar Evers, who was the first martyr of the civil rights movement. And Charles and John and I and a couple other guys were in Jackson, Mississippi. We were up in a room, and we were talking. I was the only white person in there. And a guy burst through the door and said, Martin Luther King has been shot. And everything went crazy. And, and they, they tried to get me out of there because I stood out, you know, like a snowman. <laughs> And hustled me through Jackson, put me in a car, and we went to Memphis, remember? And I climbed, I went up the second floor of the little building. I, I climbed up on the 
on the toilet, and I looked out the window where James Earl Ray stood when he shot Martin Luther King. Then we went up to the balcony where he died and saw the bloodstains there. Amazing moment. Amazing moment. 